Hall of Fame driver Mike Lachance hung up the lines in 2014. He now keeps himself busy by helping his son Pat train horses at Magical Acres in New Jersey. Hoofbeats caught up with Lachance for a feature story in the August 2017 issue of the magazine. You told me you drove how many races without a, a big injury? Uh, I would say 80,000 races and uh, no major injury. A few broken bones here and there, but you know I mean? Nothing to keep me out uh, for a long time. So many guys like Hervé Fillion drove a lot of races in his life, a lot of injury there, the shoulder and the legs. and. So, you know, I was very, very, very lucky to come out of it like that. To me, I stopped just at the right time. I was still decent when I stopped, and I didn't want to be on the track with, with driving bad horses there and get people to complain, and no, I didn't want to do that. Like I always say, I the best of everything in this business there, and why would I want to settle for the rest at the end? I do a, a lot of the, the washing the jar cards. Not a lot, but I do it sometimes. But I want to look good today, so I'm not going to do it. Did you always have this greater personality when you're in the sport? <laughs> That's all I had, the personality. I didn't have anything else, so I had to work with it. I went to school to seventh grade, so I had to work with do something in my life. <clears throat> yeah. When it, when it was time, I can always uh, talk my way out of uh, almost anything. Just have so many extra horses that we, we gotta have some in the other barn, so. How many did you guys take out today? Just, uh, but maybe 10 now, eh? yeah. today. From the front. Way up. Yeah. Do you miss the thrill of being at the track in big races? Well, uh, when I watch those, those big races, there I get goosebumps. And, uh, but I don't miss being there and in it because, you know, I, I assume I've I done uh, long enough. No, I want to see a big race because I, I remember when I was in the, the same race and at that time and so it brings, uh, brings the good memory back. So. How many races do you get to watch? Well, uh, the, I watch most of the, our races there that Patrick is in it. Uh, not most, uh, every one of them. All the driver today, one, if one is not in, good, in great shape today, he won't even get the mount. And a lot of young guys, there are so many young guys around that can win a race there. 30 years ago, you had some guy that they could manage a horse all year. And you know, they were at the, uh, at the end of the year, they were, they were driving him, and at the beginning of the year, so they drove him every start. So they would be much more careful with their horses. When I get up on Sunday, get up very early, and I go to all the track that I want, see the, the races there, and I, I watch the replay. So it keeps me, uh, keeps me informed about, about all the, the racing there. But if there's a big night of racing somewhere, stake race, I very rarely miss it there. Do you remember how many handles, how many jugs, how many futurities? Oh, I do. It's, it's easy to, to remember. Uh, I won four handles, I won five jugs. Futurity, I think three or two or three. <laughs> North American Cup, three. You know, that was so, so many breeders crown and, you know, I was very fortunate. I, I had the, more than what I deserved. Who are some of the best drivers that you drove against, say, 30 years ago? 30 years ago, uh, 
Carmen Abatello, Hervé, uh, some even some thirty years ago, they they still they still around today. Like John, Cat Manzi, one of the top driver that I've seen in my life. And uh, but my the one that I idolized all my life was Keith Waple. He was something special. I never seen one like that ever after him. A, a complete. He was a complete horseman. Good businessman. Great guy. Great, great, great driver. So that that was the, the that's the best I've seen in my life. I don't believe that you you tell a driver what to do. I believe that he learned by himself of his mistake and his good. He, uh, and uh, when he, do, he drives a horse uh, great there, sometime I'm going to tell him. If he drives a horse bad, I don't say anything, which he's a very, very, very good driver. He doesn't make too many mistakes and he knows his own horses there and, and he protects them and uh, he's doing a very, very good job on the track there. In, in, in the barn, he's an excellent horseman, but even my other son in Toronto came into the business a little later. Excellent horseman. You don't get to go to the races anymore, but you spend every day at the barn with your son. That's got to be a pretty good feeling. Yeah, it's, a, it's the greatest feeling because I don't have all the, uh, there's the responsibility. He does. And uh, so I can get the best of everything. So really. Still love it out there? Oh, I, I really enjoy, especially on the, when it's a nice day there. Rainy days and things like that. I could go without it there, but you know it's not. It's part of the game. But now I still uh, really enjoy myself there. Pat told us that when he was younger, you told him don't get into the business. And I didn't want him to be in the business because, especially back then, I was I was feeling there was going to be a harder and tougher, and that that's before we got the slot there. There was a big shot in the arm there when we got the slot. And before that, I, you know, like I thought the future of uh, honest racing was going to be uh, really, really tough. But we got to a point there, he wasn't happy in school and he wasn't happy doing anything else than the horses. Then when he got back in, the, then he, he got back in full, uh, full speed. Same as you? Didn't well, I, with anything else? Uh, yeah, I was born in the, with the horses there, really. And, uh, that's all I wanted to do all my life, and uh, obviously that's, he was the same way. Got to be pretty proud of this. Very proud, yeah. You know, like uh, there's so many uh, uh, good driver or great driver that had their son in the business, and they weren't so lucky like I was. And Pat, I'm guessing you're pretty happy you didn't listen to your dad's advice. Yeah, it's great to have him around, and you know, there's, there's always uh, he's always got uh, a good a good opinion on everything. So uh, you know, he's always there for for that. So it's it's, uh, it's a big help, no question. You're an experienced horseman. Do you still have things where you go, "Hey, Dad, can you sit behind this one?" Or, "Hey, Dad." Uh, absolutely. No, there's no question. You know, and, you know, and vice versa. You know, like we we bounce ideas off each other, and then uh, you know we come up with something. And you know, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. It's trial and error, but you never stop learning in this in this business. But so it's uh, it's just a it's a big edge to have him around, no question. I want to think that uh, that he learned certain things from me, but I can tell you, I learned a lot of things from him. If you're not uh, able to uh, to uh, change with the with the time, you're done in this business. There, the, the old way it still works some of the time. Not all the time. I would say my favorite horse of all time probably was Doc's Fella in the early days in New York. That was because that's the horse that did so much for me. And uh, after that, like uh, I had a lot of favorite there, like Continental Victory was something very, very special. What a dramatic two-horse battle! Continental Victory, the Philly on the inside for the champ. On the outside, Lindy Lane and O'Donnell. Uh, Self-possessed did something for me at one at one time that it was the right time that when you won the handball all my family came from Montreal my older brother 
and uh, so that was something special there. And self-possessed starts to turn it on. Self-possessed, those drifting out. Angus Hall trying to take advantage. Self-possessed, Mike Lachance keeping him to his task. He's all alone now, and he's home free. Angus Hall will be second, and Joy Levesque is going to rally, but it's going to be self-possessed. I drove so many great horses, the Western Dreamer, uh, Matt Scooter was a horse that did so much for me. And, uh, Better's Delight and the Western Ideal and so large amount of horses that they were great to, uh, for me. Continental Victory, she was ahead of her time. She was 20 years ago, she was racing again against uh, the boys and uh, she had a super nice gait and uh, just a strong mare. She was just a freak. She was something special. If she beat Lindy Lane, you'd actually driven in the Breeders' Rally before. Every, I drove uh, every start of his life. And, and I had, I had to, to, really honestly, I, wa I wanted to stay with Lindy Lane, but Gerfine was, uh, Ronnie Gerfine was, dra was uh, training a Continental Victory, and it was, it meant so much to him that I drove the filly, and she was tough to drive a little bit, and so I stayed with her. But uh, I didn't think that she could beat Lindy Lane because Lindy Lane can get a good trip behind her, and that day she came up, nobody could beat her. Your last last really big win was the Futurity with Creatine. Is that, did you know yep. you were sort of going to bow out then? Yes, I knew it was at the end. I just didn't want to finish the, in a bad way that everybody say, ah, oh, what is he doing? He's in everybody's way. I, like I, I keep saying to, to a lot of people, I had the best of everything in the horse business. I didn't want to settle for the rest. That went that a little bit bittersweet for you since I don't think anybody else knew but you knew maybe that was the last really really big one? Now the, the, the last race I drove in my life was a horse for uh, Tony Olanya at Lexington and uh, it was a long shot and I won and uh, when I get, got back in the driver's room I took all my things out of the driver's room I got in my car my wife was there and I, t I looked at her and I said that's my last drive today and I never drove in after that. I drove like in a Hall of Fame race in Canada and just, uh, yeah, and I knew, I knew, I knew that that was, that was time for me and I was right.